Okay, y'all know I love me some Gaia. So I watched this episode, Inner Worlds, Outer Worlds, um, and I'm really, I'm still pulling research together for my energy course. I have the Preserve and Protect Your Energy course done. You can purchase that at the link in the bio. It's awesome. It's $15. It teaches you so many moves to meditate, to do the Pyramid of Light technique, to do br- everything from the smudging that you saw to earthing is in it. It's chock full. You should get it. And, th- and the next thing that I have coming after this lymphatic massage guide is done and the period course is done, those are almost ready, is this energy course. But I cannot stop researching and I cannot stop reading. Somebody mentioned my document. This is like one of 40. And every time I think I'm done with it, I find out new information and I have to get another book. So I've been working on this for three years, y'all. And if you've been here with me, you know what I'm talking about. And that shit looks dope. Here's a reason, like, here's a look at it. Okay. So let's get into this. One, but the point that I'm trying to get to with this, and this is where we're going with this, is about manifestation and like the elements within and how form is created. Okay. So first I want to show you a bit from this video. And it really is showing, you know, we've all seen the water sound vibration technique where they put sound up to water and it starts forming shapes and patterns. We've seen them do it in sand. This is them doing it in cornstarch. You see that funny little blob? This is research where they took water and they wanted to put something a little bit more solid in it to give it more sinless. Our own creativity and capacity for pattern recognition is the link between the microcosm and macrocosm, the timeless world of waves and the solid world of things. And as they increase the vibration, this form starts to build, right? We know this is happening and this is happening with every single thought that you actually put enough energy into. And I want to talk about that for a minute. So I'm showing you this is just like, I have to pull this information together anyway. So, and walk me through this if you know anything about this and maybe um, I might be on the wrong track. We'll see. Okay. So, okay. Simple sine waves through a dish of water. You can see patterns in the water. Depending on the frequency of the wave, different ripple patterns will appear. The higher the frequency, the more complex the pattern. These forms are repeatable, not random. The more you observe, the more you start to see how vibration arranges matter into complex forms from simple repeating waves. This water vibration has a pattern similar to a sunflower. It is easy to observe how simple vibrations in water can create recognizable natural patterns. But as we add solids and increase the amplitude, things get even more interesting. Adding cornstarch to water, we get more complex phenomena. The animating principle of the universe is described in every major religion using words that reflect the understanding of that time in history. I know what I'm saying. Okay, so the idea I want you to start with is like this egg shape, right? I want you to think of a cell. Now, you could be the center of this cell and you are. A nothing, a, and a little neutron is in the center and you've got the edges. Um, this is what the universe is like and what you are like micro macro. Okay. What I've been reading about is what they call, um, mental enzymes so that we know that this shell, this atom is not the, the smallest bit, right? That it is quarks and tachyons and all of these smaller bits encoded within the shell that give the shell all of the information necessary to determine what the shell is. Stay with me. The spheres are cells creating worlds, creating life. That's why you should not stay with information in two dimensions. This is not circles. Circles just hold us trapped in one perspective of the universe. You have to see the sphere in order to understand that you have freedom into many other directions of time and space. 
elemental enzymes are the tiny components that go into the larger idea. And when you have enough elemental enzymes that come together into that bubble, you get enough energy to split and you get a two dimension. Have enough energy to continue to form that bubble and like a baby being born, you get three, okay? And then if you can get to four, you've got a structure you can build, right? And you can keep building it. The first physical realities were just a projection of these spheres in vibration of the soul that were dividing itself in many, many and thousands of parts that created electrons, protons, neutrons, molecular beings, and these realities that created the souls. Take that concept. If this is our thoughts, our thoughts come out and go out into the way, the consistent wave that is all of it. If, you're, if your thoughts are going out there like that, you can do this with negative thoughts and positive thoughts, but it's based on the energy that you put into it. If you can sit consistently keep trying to build it, it's going to get bigger. It's going to expand. It's going to expand. It's going to expand until you put so much energy into it that it's going to vibrate and form on its own. So we have the four statements of the universe, which will be the process of time in which the third dimension will live. This process have to move once and again, once and again, like will, once and again, so you can see different realities all the time. When you have expressed a reality, then you have experienced a reality, then you have integrated a reality, and then you transcend that reality. The transcendence is to move a little bit forward. And then you have another one, another one, another one, and another one, and you move again, and another perspective. I move again. And that's what we call when you live from one perspective, maybe in your next life, you will have, you will be born like a different uh, being in the same situation. So you can see a different way of the same reality. That's why maybe if you are the good one in this life, uh, trying to solve a problem in the next life, you have to be the opposite. So you can see the other opportunity of that reality. So that makes the being to see every choice and every opportunity from this from this circle that is going to create. So you have this cross, and at the moment you have lived every possibility of that only reality, you create the circle. And after that, the circle must also change the perspective. So as many times you leave the circle and as many times you change your perspective, suddenly what you will have is a sphere. So can you take this concept and apply it to a place in your life where you have been trying to do something, get something, gain something and figure out what elements might be missing or what elements are there? What stage in the process are you in? Can we do that? I think through meditation we can. And if we can get an idea of where everything is vibrating in these different thought bubbles, we can potentially go into those and uh, switch some of those elements around, right? Pretty cool idea. So this got me thinking about uh, thoughts again and how thoughts are formed. And it literally is um, going through dimensions, okay? So do you ever notice, and this is probably because uh, like the villains of the world, like know like all of this, but like certain things will last forever and certain things won't last for very long. What if on a mental capacity, certain things made it through to a certain dimension, but they didn't excel enough to, to have staying power. And like, I think we talked about this last time that you are like a dot and you are, um, your consciousness is on every level of the vibration and that you exist in all of those dimensions. How do you get an idea to exist beyond those dimensions is based on the vibrational pattern that can be into it. Think about that. I don't know why you have to think about that, but you should. Um, so if you are trying to manifest something, think about something, form something, build something again, how much energy are you building towards that one thought? And then you have to remember that all the negative energies and all the positive energy are going into that same form. And because we live in polarity, 
I don't think that's a bad thing because with the right force of the positive and negative, you create spin, which is what causes expansion. So maybe the idea is to go through the journeys that we go through when we are trying to attain these big things so that we have enough negative and positive energy to build them. That just came to me. And this is why I rant. Thank you for listening. My name is Candace with Luluti Skincare. Shop, subscribe, support. Love you. Talk to you later. That was fun.